You're good. We're on. All right. Well, then, I guess what I will do is call this meeting to order here this evening. It is 531. This is our August 13th Arts and Culture Advisory Committee meeting. Um, has everybody has a ch had a chance to look at the agenda? And are there any uh, additions to the agenda? Hearing none, I would assume that everybody also has had a chance to uh, see the agenda for tonight. So we'll move on to our roll call. Um, let's see, we have Walt, Rusty, Michael's here. Uh, I'm not getting the full look on everybody on the screen as to all who's here, but who else is on? <clears throat> Jeremy. Jeremy's here, okay. Adeline. I'm sorry? Madeline, I'm here. That's what I thought. I thought I heard you pop up in there. One, two, three, four, five. So that'll do it. Is that all of us right now? Yeah. So um, uh, Jamie has requested uh, to be excused. So I don't know if someone wants to make a motion for that. Um, if she, she did contact you and she contacted us through the thing. So I would say that I don't know if we had to make a motion, but that is an excused absence for Jamie. But we are waiting on... Michael, as well as Carol, right? Mm -hmm. And um, we had another addition to the board that was a new woman named Claire Ellis, um, but that just happened yesterday. So I have not talked to her yet. Okay. Um, and then uh, Michael did say that he was, he had his dog was um, ill and he was picking him up from a hospital in Appleton, he might not be back here, so. Well, I, I would give him an excuse on that one. He's traveling and he may join us. Uh, so Jamie and, and Michael are excused. Um, so we'll get uh, going from there. Did everybody have a chance to look at the minutes from the previous meeting? Mm -hmm. um, is there, have there been any, for those that were there at the session, any changes uh, or additions to the minutes as they were presented? Hearing none, I would accept a motion that says uh, we accept the minutes as presented for our July 2020 committee meeting. Aye. Second. Aye. Okay. All those in favor that uh, were in attendance to accept the minutes uh, as presented, say aye. 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 All right. Those minutes are done. Um, is there any public comment this evening? Nobody's waiting. Okay, thank you. We'll move on to our reports here. I'll just uh, give a brief one. I welcome Michael uh, to the committee. Uh, and, um, I'll give kind of a quick overview of what it is that we do here for your sake, Michael. Uh, we are the committee that is the liaison between our arts and cultural community in the city of Marquette uh, and the Marquette City Commission. Um, our job is to help uh, help the commission with questions about art projects, um, ideas, festivals, you know, any of those cultural programs and whatnot. Um, uh, one of the missions, at least one of the ways I look at it as, as, as I've been the chair with this, is that this committee's purpose is to say that there is art and cultural programming in our community, but not to decide what that art and cultural programming is. What I mean by that is that we can vet a proposal before it goes to the city commission, um, but that would only be to see if it meets criteria that would make it a viable event, meaning it has financing, it has its various coverages and things like that. Um, individual members of this committee are free to get together and work with on projects with Tina or with Tristan or with anybody from the Arts and Culture Center um, or any group, but as a committee, we don't get into the minutia of what a particular project is. And when it comes to public art, that is why we have the Public Art Commission in the city. Uh, but uh, it's it's been a very active committee. Michael, I think you're going to enjoy this. I'm also looking forward to hearing your perspectives that you're bringing to it as an event promoter, as a creative, and also someone in our, our uh, travel industry uh, here in our area. And 
understanding the value of arts and cultural programming and what it means in terms of bringing dollars to Marquette, which is one of my personal missions is to try to convince the commission and the powers that be that arts and cultural programming is not only um, enjoyable and a key part of a community, but it has a financial value and a benefit. And that is why it deserves the support of the city commission. So I welcome you, Michael, and I, I'm looking forward to hearing what you've got to say. Um, beyond that, I really have much, don't have much else to say other than it's been an enjoyable summer so far, even though there hasn't been any real major events going on. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's been good to get out and see some of the things that are going on. There are still some gallery shows, you know, and, and even the, the mural on Front Street and those kinds of things are are popping up and uh, it's been pretty good so far, but I do miss a lot of our things, our art on the rocks and Hiawatha and and, and all of those things, but uh, they will be back in some way, shape or form. With that, uh, I would turn it over to Tina for her report. Yeah, um, so nice to see you, Michael. I was really hoping Carol was here because I you know, wanted to uh, kind of let her know what we're up to. Carol so, is um, trying to join the meeting right now. What's that? Carol is trying to join the meeting right oh, now. Oh, she is? Yeah. Good. I don't know if she's in the waiting room, perhaps. <clears throat> OK, well, hopefully. Yeah, who runs the Zoom? What's that? Who runs the Zoom? Uh, Sean Hobbins is. There's nobody in the waiting room. Yeah. Is that the question? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's nobody. Is she texting you? Is that why you thought that, Jeremy? Oh, uh, no, she, she is. She just got in. She sent an email to everyone. Oh, I didn't see her. I responded to her, sent her the link. If I may ask whoever has the dog that is barking, if you could mute your microphone, please. That's you. So is Carol with us now? Hi, hey, Carol. Carol. If you can hear us, you have to enable your microphone and your uh, your camera. I see, I see a name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she doesn't have her microphone or camera turned on at all. Mm -hmm. Well. Welcome, Carol. I hope you can hear us at least, and uh, we will continue on. We were just getting into. Uh, there she is. Oh, all right. Okay, there it is. There she is. Okay, let's get back okay. into it. So, uh, my manager report um, updates the uh, the library um, is small is uh, taking small steps. Um, to potentially uh, reopen. But then again, um, that is really just for them when that happens. It'll be a limited number of people and uh, uh, they will be asked to come in, get their books and leave. There won't be places to sit and hang out. We won't have in-person programming and there won't be exhibits. Um, so that'll be very slow. Uh, and we'll be available for in-person meetings by appointment or if you drop in, we will social distance for those meetings with staff in the studio. We still will be doing Zoom meetings with groups like this, and there will be no meetings in the library at all of any groups. So that's happening. Another uh, art center slash operations staff update is Taylor Coolyou has taken a position as the marketing manager for the Michigan Chamber of Commerce. So um, it's a giant, uh, uh, What's that word I'm looking for? Trajectory in her career going up. And I'm really proud of her. Her last week is this next week. Um, and uh, it's really exciting to have that connection with her working for the Michigan Chamber with us. Uh, that job has been approved. Her job here has been approved. It's a part-time position. Um, you'll be, I'll uh, circulate that to this whole group when that becomes available uh, 29 hours a week. Uh, but uh, looking forward to finding a new person in that position 
And Taylor will still continue with the Upper Peninsula Arts and Culture Alliance. The Chamber was really interested in her work with the Alliance. And I think the fact that the Alliance serves all 15 counties um, was a feather in her cap because they serve all 15 counties. So I think there's going to be a lot of growth with uh, everything that's going on with her connection. So that's news. Um, Tristan Luma, uh, coordinated a senior art kit uh, to go project and participants from the senior art class have signed up and pretty impressive, a uh, box full of different art materials and specific projects to use those materials with uh, sketching and watercolor. So um, that's been a really good thing. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot more of those. It's got a lot more kits. Um, I'm working on the Our Town National Endowment for the Arts Cultural Trail Grant. $150,000. Um, it's due uh, Tuesday. I hope to submit it on Monday. Um, and that is to, for especially our new people, Carol and Michael, is to fund uh, an interpretive cultural trail along the Holly Greer bike path along the lakeshore. And that would include interpretive signage, um, some significant signage areas that would be kind of almost more uh, destinations, gathering spaces, and then public art. And just today, the uh, Market Public Art Commission had their meeting today at noon. And they uh, made a motion that the first piece of public art for Marquette should be um, uh, in inspired by the indigenous history of this community and created by indigenous artists. So that's huge news. And I think the balancing of that, is that that's, a good, that's a good first piece. Obviously, where it goes and um, what that request or proposal will look like. Um, there's a lot up in the air yet, but at least they're moving in that direction. Um, the Marquette 365 is an online uh, calendar that we've had that we took over for the chamber and are running. And of course it's in a uh, very exciting uh, rebranding and development phase. Tristan Luma has been spearheading that. Um, he's actually with us because he's here presenting tonight as well. But it's going to include, um, for Michael and Carol, um, public art directory, uh, blog, uh, resources for artists, community resources, grant listings, really a, a, a hub for all things to know and how to make art happen in Marquette. So it's, it's taking longer than we all initially thought. I don't think it's going to be uh, released, the new website, until end of September. There's a lot of, lot of work that's going into that. Mike Forrester is gonna be doing the rebranding for us. So we're super excited about that. And we are looking for still the new title. It is powered by Community Services Department, but we have discussed it being the, uh, for example, calling it Currents, you know, the City of Marquette Arts and Culture Community Event Guide. Or uh, Nina Itner suggested uh, the, the source or the resource, resource. You know, so we're looking for snazzy names that kind of encapsulate what that is. And also new, um, the Alliance uh, received $2,000 from the Hervenden Foundation to do an artist directory from Arthopolis on their website. We're also giving $1,000, so that will be on our website as well. Artist directory for the entire UP. So that's pretty, that, that's big news. Um, and hopefully, uh, We'll get it to everybody fast. Um, other big meeting or other big news, uh, Words to Live By and Bike By, a uh, public art project that is going live on uh, Tuesday. Uh, five words to be painted on the bike path, each letter being six foot by four foot stencils that Tristan and I will be painting on the bike path. Uh, the words are gratitude, hope, uh, gratitude, hope, respect, dream, and remember. Um, you'll see all of that. Um, please help us circulate it when it goes live on Tuesday. Um, it's a community art project. Artists won't get paid. Uh, it will be juried. So people will submit their words and their designs to go into the stenciled uh, words. Um, it's temporary. It probably would be up here until next September. But I'm really excited about that project that we felt we needed to do something right now to kind of lift people's spirits. 
Uh, Tristan and I are looking, and I say Tristan and I because Taylor is leaving. So we're looking for volunteers. That's going to need some volunteers to make sure artists are social distancing, to be present at each word site. So if you're interested in volunteering with us um, to help us um, mid-September, we'll get you more details. Um, the Alliance meets, um, and I can send everybody that Zoom link. You can go to the Alliance, Upper Peninsula Arts and Culture Alliance Facebook site, but we have a meeting uh, Wednesday from 11 to 1 that's open to anybody. Um, we have public comment just like this one. It's a Zoom meeting. And then we also have a virtual happy hour. If you want to have a drink, you can meet Alliance members and we can get to know you on Tuesday night from uh, 6 to 7. So that's a great opportunity uh, as well. Could I jump in here real quick? Um, Absolutely. I'm not sure exactly, Tina, um, could I jump in for yeah, just a yeah. second here? Carol seems to be having some audio problems or something. I don't know if she's hearing any of us. So um, uh, she just messaged everyone that she was having audio, couldn't, didn't have any volume. I don't know. I can hear you fine. I'm, I don't know how everyone else is doing, but um, I may She's on her phone. Her mic is probably not enabled. Yeah, that yeah the, if she's on the app on her phone, she needs to click on the microphone button and connect it. I don't know if she knows how to do that, though. Um, is there a way to send her a, a message uh, real quick? I'm, I'm on my phone and I don't I'm not even going to touch it too much. I'll mess with it. Jeremy, can you help with that? Uh, email is the only way I, I can send her an email. Um, I, I don't have her contact information otherwise, but yeah, I'll send oh. her. Why don't you utilize the chat? You know, just that's what oh, I'm yeah. doing right now. I didn't see that. Sorry. Oh, I didn't realize there was a chat. I think Sean's getting in there. There she goes. There we got it. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry, Carol. You missed the report. You can rewatch it. This though, it's all it, it's all going to be taped. So you can rewatch everything and listen to it. Oh, okay. <laughs> It's all it, was good news. it was good news um, so far. So anyway, now that we got that resolved, Tina, whatever you have left, please, if you would carry on. Um, no, those are the, the big, uh, the big things. So that's the report. Okay. Um, are there any questions for Tina? So the Alliance is this coming Tuesday? The yeah. Meeting from six to seven? For the uh, happy hour get visiting time. Yep. Awesome. Six to seven Eastern time, yeah. Okay, two things I wanna to add to Tina's report that uh, Bear mentioning is one of the reasons that um, the cultural trail program is moving up in some semblance of at least a, a sense of urgency or a priority is because following my report of the committee and, and arts and culture to the commission last month, uh, it was by some of the commission, it was mentioned strongly that there have been other groups that have said they're going to do the same kind of thing and a commissioner in particular wanted to see something done by next year and not by having me come back or whoever's going to do the report and nothing had happened so when i spoke to the committee last month the message i wanted to leave was that we basically have a challenge to get something done with this project um and it seems like we're moving in that direction with what Tina has told us with the Public Art Commission and with other things. And mm -hmm. that's that's a good thing. Um, the other thing is, is with Marquette 365, I remind the committee and also want to tell the new members of the committee that when we did our master planning process and our public meetings uh, about six years ago, five, six years ago, uh, not only were they very well attended by many different aspects of our community, I mean, very well attended, much to the surprise city staff and even myself i was not expecting it to be as well attended two sessions that had great turnout the number one thing that came out of it was a a a website or a digital clearinghouse of this kind of information about arts and cultural programming what the resources are in our community that's what marquette365.com originally grew out of but it didn't really connect with the community the way everyone involved had hoped it did. There were some other factors that came into play. This relaunching of Marquette365.com, 
I think is very good, especially with the concept of rebranding it, because if we can put that previous name to bed, I think it will make it easier for this to get into the community and be embraced. It's really user driven. So community groups have to put their stuff on it. It's not like send it somewhere else and then it gets put together. You can get on it yourself, but it's going to evolve. And of the players you've got involved with Tristan and, and, and uh, with the others to, to rebrand it, I think this is going to come out really well. So. Um, all right, uh, Tristan is here as our next agenda item uh, is uh, to talk about the Masonic Arts Theater Innovation Center and an update on that. Tristan, you have the floor. Thanks, Walt. Yep, uh, my name is Tristan. I work with Tina at the Arts Center. Um, I am also on the board of MATI, which is the Masonic Arts Theater Innovation Company. Um, I just want to give you guys a little bit of information about it. Maybe you've heard about it. We kind of launched it uh, a few weeks ago. Some publicity came out around it, um, but thought it'd be a good idea to bring it up with this group in case there's any interest moving forward or if you have any questions. Um, so we're still in the pretty fledgling phases. Um, this project, it actually started up a few years ago. Ryan Engel is the current manager of the building and he had this vision for the space. The only drawback was the Masons were still in the space, um, but since then uh, they've decided that um, so Ryan Engel is going to buy their share. Uh, I guess this organization, this nonprofit, is going to purchase their share of the building. They're still going to keep some of their stuff up there. Um, but for the most part, we're going to be renovating that upstairs part of the Masonic building. So the goals right now um, are three pillars, as mentioned in the title, uh, arts, theater, and innovation. Um, those are kind of our jumping off points, but they're not, we're not siloing what we're doing by any means. So some of the big projects we have in mind right now, um, we want to do, we want to make it a space for art classes, uh, innovation classes, tech classes, education in general, um, offering a space for community members to come in and teach courses, kind of similar to what we do with the Art Center, but with a little more of a focus on uh, maker space type of projects and high tech. Um, so the Campfire Coworks, co-works which is currently downstairs, um, they're gonna be an active partner in this too. And we're still kind of figuring how that's all gonna to play together. Um, so that, that's a big one is that education component. And then to speak more about the makers space, um, there's been this longstanding need in the community for resources such as wood turning equipment, uh, pottery wheels that are accessible by the public, um, accessible, you know, that the public can't access. Uh, and then things like 3D printers and stuff like that. So that's kind of the innovation side of things. So right now we're doing a lot of soul searching, a lot of asking around, um, seeing what people would be interested in, what kind of equipment they want available to rent out. Uh, so kind of trying to figure out how all these rooms are laid out upstairs, but we want to make that uh, a big component of what we accomplish moving forward. Another thing, uh, the Red Room, maybe a lot of you are familiar with it. It's the big theater space in the Masonic building itself. Uh, we're going to be revamping that a little bit, um, but also just making better use of it. So it's really underutilized. Uh, the building doesn't get a lot of use out of it. So we wanna bring more makers into that space, more theater companies, uh, inspire new productions, new companies to come in um, and just give them, give them the space, the affordable and reliable space that they've been asking for for so long in the community. Um, so that's a big project too. Um, one thing I do wanna point out, uh, some people have had some questions about because the Masonic building, it's kind of an overarching term. Um, people are not sure if that means the downstairs segment with the mall or just the upstairs. And the answer is it includes all of it. Um, the goal right now is to keep about 35% of it as designated retail space, which will be that mall section downstairs. So all the tenants that are there, we're not gonna be kicking them out. Um, they're gonna have the option to keep up with their leases. Uh, but a big focus moving forward is to bring arts and culture businesses into those spaces. Um, so again, it's, it's, not, it's not a matter of kicking anyone out or just prioritizing one thing over another, but we are going to encourage things like pop-up um, art supply shops or uh, separate galleries or specific artists who want to move their wood training equipment downstairs to offer that um, because that's going to accomplish our mission a little more closely. Um, so that's a big part too. Um, we want some designated gallery spaces, rotating art coming in and out. Um, uh, the commercial kitchen is going to be expanded a little bit to allow for more food trucks and food businesses to get off the ground. So really, there's a lot of things firing right now. Uh, I don't want to ramble on too much about it, um, but 
there will be a lot more information coming out over the next few weeks, uh, specifically to this committee, um, some surveys and some interest. Um, just we're trying to gauge who, who wants to be part of this moving forward, whether that's in a volunteer role, possible board member role down the line, or just be in touch with us and get our MailChimps. Um, so that being said, um, I'm happy to answer any questions anyone has. Um, it doesn't have to be right now. Uh, you can email me whenever. Um, and yeah, we just hope that, that you guys continue to follow this and support it. Um, refer people to us if you have makers in mind, artists in mind that you think could benefit from this space, whether it's music, theater, arts, you name it. Um, turn them to us because we want to talk to them because we're trying to, you know, really trying to utilize the space as best as possible and to bring as many new players into the mix and really inspire the, this, this maker attitude in Marquette that, that people have wanted a central location for for so long. Uh, yeah, I have a quick question for you, Tristan. Yeah. Um, how are you currently like getting that kind of feedback from like, you know, certain performers or artists to like get your feedback of what to do with the space? Yeah, so we sent out a survey. Um, I th most of you, everyone who was on the committee, I think it was early June should have gotten it. So I can resend that to anyone who hasn't received it. But that was an interest survey for the makerspace itself. So asking, okay, what kind of programs or what kind of classes would you be interested in seeing in this space? So that went out, but we're gonna be doing more of that surveying as time goes on. And we're, we're building up this listserv right now too. So between, we're only a board of five, but between us, we have a pretty comprehensive listserv, but we're always looking for more people to add to it. Mm -hmm. um, and then beyond that, it's just uh, getting the word out about this in general and encouraging people to reach out to us and, and to share specifically. You know, surveys can only take you so far and they're quite impersonal. So yeah. yeah, if you if you ever want to talk to whether it's Ryan, the director, or one of our board members, and to share what's on your mind or what you want to see, um, mm -hmm. we're compiling all of that and putting into a list so that we can look at these ideas down the road and decide which ones uh, are the most popular and uh, the best to implement sooner rather than later. That sounds awesome. Yeah, thanks. We probably do. I I think we talked about this like some Zoom discussions for one that's for theater, one that's for music, one that's for um, visual arts, just to get people excited and brainstorming and talking and uh, situations like this. Um, one of the reasons that I wanted Tristan and Walt and I talked about having Tristan speak about this is because. Mukti has the uh, potential to fill a lot of the initiatives and goals in the city's uh, arts and culture master plan, you know, especially to support and engage the community um, with education, lifelong learning, and developing that supportive, sustainable environment for artists and creative business. So as we move forward, and if when we have time, I know at the cultural trail, in other projects, but if there is, um, I've told Tristan this, if there are opportunities for staff to roll up their sleeves to assist and it fits, if it's a Kresge grant or something, I don't know what that is. I think the former 365 will be really helpful with maybe potentially, you know, um, just getting the word out there, stories, news features, um, whatever it may be, but uh, how can the arts and culture advisory, the city, you know, help uh, make this uh, a reality and make it exciting? And one thing I would add to that is to take, you know, take this information back to your various groups that you are affiliated with or work with and say, look, this is in the works. This might give some meeting space might give a few other options to your group to to do some things as this whole project comes along. Tristan, who is on the board of this right now? So the board is Nina Itner, Nick Steffi, Kim Pegmagee, uh, David Kronberg, and myself. Okay. And I will add um, just really quickly in terms of, I mentioned volunteering and uh, applying to be a board member. But in addition to that, um, we have three committees. So it's broken up into theater, arts, and innovation. Um, and then we're going to be looking for active committee members who won't be full board members, at least on the offset or outset. Um, but we definitely want more voices in the mix. I think we're looking to add anywhere from four to seven to each of these committees to help guide what those organizations or those, you know, those branches are doing. So I'm in the innovation one. If anyone's interested in joining the innovation committee, give me a holler. Uh, we're going to be looking really soon. Um, just trying to get some good people in the fold who are motivated to, to help see this through. Um, and then lastly, um, 
we have the ambitious goal of opening the space up in beginning of January this year. So um, we just filed our 1023 and we, it's going to be probably two or four months before we get that. So maybe it's extra ambitious to say January. But in addition to that, we'll be taking out a loan and, and starting this process of purchasing the space uh, and then starting to make those renovations and decide which room is going to be designated for what. So it's going to be really exciting uh, 12 months coming up. And if, if you're interested, we could use all the manpower, all the motivation that we can get. I've got all a right. question. Yeah. Uh, do you guys have a uh, method for like donations or fundraising at the moment? Um, we're still kind of trying to figure that out. The idea is that, I mean, a lot of the revenue will come from the tenants downstairs. That'll be a big feeder. In addition, uh, theater productions um, will be ticketing. So in addition to inviting local theater companies to use the space, we'll actually be working on um, bringing performances in that we plan to, whether that's in collaboration with others or, or whatever. So ticketed events will be a part of that. Um, but there will be a membership structure for like the maker space. We don't know what that looks like exactly yet. I just, I'm just talking like a way to donate. Oh, um, yeah, we haven't figured that out either because we're still waiting for the nonprofit status to be able to accept it. Um, okay. In which case, yeah, we'll definitely follow. That's going to be a huge part of it too is private. and, and uh, Yeah, yeah. I was thinking of like, you know, Peggy Frazier and different people that have had ideas to open up big things and Marquette would want to be a part of something like this, you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a lot of community support for this. What's that? Tristan, no, yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, you go, Jeremy. I'm done. Um, the only other question I had was like, are I I know there are specific grants out there um that deal with like safety when it comes to art spaces because uh like a lot of it was um kind of brought on by the those fires out in California and stuff and so I don't know you probably have a good idea Tristan but I, I know there's some um, I know in the past there's been some issues with that building but if there's anything that needs to be addressed safety wise for those those spaces uh, there, there's a lot of funding out there in the form of grants for those kinds of things mm -hmm. yeah we have a we have a couple on our radar right now Ryan's been checking out uh, I do know we have to get a new boiler uh, which is going to be incredibly expensive and a lot of facade improvements in general so that's that's a big priority with this purchase too is getting cool. getting everything figured out ada accessibility enhanced all these considerations that will make it a, a central process cool. space. any other questions or comments for tristan all right thanks tristan it's very exciting i encourage people to get involved with this because the more voices at the table will help and uh, more people willing to help out will make it work as well. Our next item uh, is old business and it's discussions of the strategic plan. We've been talking about re renewing or reviewing rather where we are in a lot of the things that were set forth in our strategic plan. Uh, Tina and I briefly spoke about this over the last couple of weeks about some of the updates and things where we are. Tina, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Um, so I guess, you know, I was thinking, uh, it's so difficult with Zoom, but we didn't want to, uh, we thought even though we don't have specific business to decide on or anything like that, it was important to meet Carol and talk to Carol and um, have Michael come on board so we can at least um, meet everybody and start thinking about the strategic plan. So I guess I'm viewing this as an introduction, um, especially for those of you that are new. But the uh, strategic plan or the master plan is a 10 year plan passed in 2014. And so depending if you decide, because I think it was fall 2014. So if you decide it's got what, four years or three years left, depending on how you count that time period. And then, you know, we need to update that plan and either change the direction. And there's a lot that we've accomplished um, in this last uh, six years in that plan, but there's a lot that needs to get done. Um, I don't know how many, you know, large initiatives, but I feel like once the cultural trail and um, also this economic impact plan that we haven't had the resources and haven't been able to do, um, those get done. There's some things that we need to prioritize. You know, we got the kind of the low hanging fruit, um, 
And so I was gonna, uh, I'm gonna screen share really quickly here. And um, can you guys all see this? Yes, I can. I don't know how big it is. Um, so basically there were two major initiatives with the strategic plan or the master plan. This is available on the city's website. If you go to the city's website, you go to the arts and culture page, which is under community services department, you will find the master plan. If you Google arts and culture master plan or you know search it, it'll also come up or I can just email it to you as well. Um, if you'd like to have something in your hands, I can print it out for you as well. But the major initiatives basically were to retain, um, I'm sorry, the city's commitment to supporting robust culture, life and creative economy with an empowered arts, culture and creative economy office um, engaging the community. And some of the big things that, uh, that were recommended, there's lots of action items. Um, one was to measure the economic value. Um, we were hoping to do that this year with the uh, Arts Alliance. The Arts Alliance, um, one of the reasons, uh, that's, a, that's a, something that we spearheaded that we can also check off our list for the master plan, but we were writing a grant with the Arts Alliance for the economic impact study. Uh, we were going to be fundraising this year for it. We hired uh, uh, someone from the former Creative Many to help us come up with a plan to begin it, uh, Jennifer Goulet, who used to run the Creative Many, and then COVID happened. And uh, it changed everything for everybody because um, it was a lot of money that we would have had to raise, a lot of work that's hard to do virtually. Uh, so that was put to the side and now they're focusing on the artist directory. Um, but it's still out there to measure uh, and to advocate for the uh, creative economy the other strategy, strategy B, is focusing efforts on providing resources that help strengthen. Um, so uh, advocacy, strategic planning, city policies that um, need to ensure that they're supportive of arts and culture, uh, offer, make sure that city resources are available for uh, arts and culture. And I think a lot of that's gonna get answered through this Marquette, the, the new platform, the 365, is because we, we're starting to look at all of our resources. And for example, one of the drop down staff was discussing is how do you make a festival in Marquette? What are the permits do you need? All these things, instead of having to call all the different offices and look for those, it should be in one place. So I think some of those will get answered. Um, historic building, historic designation, we haven't touched that, obviously. Uh, revisit current active plans to make sure arts is addressed. We have done that. Walt did that with Parks and Recreation. Um, again, the value, let's see. Um, I'm just gonna go quickly th through, and then I obviously want you guys, we can talk about it and uh, you can read it more in detail on your own to bring back ideas for next time. Um, some things regarding strategic, uh, strategic policy for city owned facilities. That's done in, uh, with Parks and Rec, uh, like for example, the uh, band shell but we don't really have a long-term facility uh, plan for all of the city facilities. Um, the one that's most specific to arts and culture would be the band shell. Otherwise we don't really own one. We rent here from the library. Um, the goal too, to uh, support active engaged learning. Again, uh, working with maps, uh, we do some stuff with the high school, but we don't have a strategic plan necessarily um, or a, a uh, a set of goals that we want to achieve with them. Um, I think Mutti could be a part of that and obviously the library, but we haven't done a lot with that. Working with NMU to fully make their arts programming available to our community. Done a little bit of that, but not a lot. Duke Life Point. Um, and it goes on to show different other strategies from working with the philanthropic volunteerism, um, mm -hmm. developing collaborative volunteer support lots of different things that we could get involved in that we haven't done. Um, let's see, providing an environment for artists. Let's see, it, we it talks about zoning, a housing study for studio space. Um, number three, I don't know if you can read it, but it does say provide an artist resource and services website that collates information for planning an event. Yes, that's happening now. 
So a lot of studies, um, a lot of uh, kind of setting the, the stage for arts and culture, not so much actually doing it ourselves. And then initiative two is making that connection between public and private nonprofit that fosters communication. And that's that alliance and um, the calendar. And so we've done a lot of initiative two. We've developed the Arts and Culture Alliance. I'm the chair of that organization. Um, we're doing the work, we're connecting with the community, with the artist directory. Um, here we called it the Marquette Area Culture and Creative Alliance. Um, it would be nice to have a local art alliance happen. Um, maybe Bhatti with that happening, that might happen, a larger voice for arts and culture, but right now this advisory committee seems to be that voice and other independent groups. Um, foster integrated strategy for festivals and continue to engage um, the community and survey the community every three years, which we have not done. So lots of different things, um, attraction retention plan. I mean, it goes on and on um, for the different things that we can do. So, you know, I want everyone to read this. I want everyone to decide what they feel like the next big thing is after uh, cultural trail um, and the economic impact plan, you know, what direction should we be looking? We can't get everything done, but what should be our priorities? And there's a lot that we haven't done. Um, and I, I really feel like that needs to come from the Arts and Culture Advisory Committee, what they feel like is next. And it would be nice to meet in person and brainstorm, but um, unfortunately we need to, to meet by Zoom. Um, but the more familiar you are with it, then we can actually engage with discussing it to see what's next. So with that, I'll, I'll open to, to questions. Well, before we get into questions, I'd like to add a couple of points to uh, the, the, plot, the master plan, the strategic plan, the process. Um, you know, one, one of the big things that came out of it that has been done and done fairly effectively was prior to this happening in 2004, the arts and culture, the, the, the office itself, in effect, what Tina and Tristan and those are doing now, was doing a lot of programming. It was doing a lot of, of children's programming and senior programming and those types of things. The shift in that was to take it away from being responsible for programming, but becoming a resource center. And that has happened. That has been one of the most effective parts, in my opinion, of this process. Um, and the other thing is, is it cannot be overstated how we, really need to come up with some bona fide way of defining the economic impact of arts and culture in our community. And this has stymied multiple groups back when Marquette had a chamber, uh, you know, with, with the, that whole effort and other groups, it's coming up with a bona fide way that it resonates with the administration and with the staff and the city to help continue to, to advocate for funding. So, you know, those are really the big things for me. The big thing for me is getting this economic impact study done, but I'm, I'm really only one that can really talk about it. I have no background in these kinds of things, but it has been a problem for many different, um, many different groups because I've been a part of many different groups. And I know Michael Reed has a little insight on it because they've done one in somewhat of an informal but formalized way with Hiawatha Music Festival. We've done somewhat of one with the Marquette Area Blues Fest, but we need to have a way of telling the city commission, the city manager, um, the financial people that it is worth it, and the, and the residents of the city of Marquette that pay taxes into the budget for the city, what the return on their investment is. And if I would say there's a priority right now, yes, it's let's get this the cultural trail stuff done. But in the background, we really should be maneuvering into trying to do that. And perhaps Michael and Carol, you guys have some really good insight into maybe where we could look to do this, but it was frustrating that everything stopped with COVID. So that's also kind of where we are, but get a copy of this plan and look it over. It is available through the website. If you need it, Tina can email it to you. Just send her a note at her email address and say, send me a copy of it but it is on the city's website and it's very comprehensive. 
it's exceptionally ambitious. Every time I read it, I say, boy, we were, we were shooting for the moon with it, but we've done a lot in these few years and we have a few more years. Um, it wouldn't be bad also that as we start to come out of the quarantine and the pandemic to start thinking about surveys again of surveying our, 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 our patrons or our clientele or however you want to say it. But yeah, you guys got questions about it or anything, go ahead. This is, this is the big, this is the big driving document for what's happening with arts and culture as an office for the city. I have a question, Walt. Um, what, what in your opinion is the big holdup with um, being able to quantify that that uh financial data like are, are you having trouble collecting the data from individual events um or well, I, would, I would say what i think that our biggest thing is is that we don't have a uh a bona fide vetted mechanism to tabulate all of that and make the report um some, something that would hold up to to scrutiny from the city and and others you know that that operate yeah see the city the commission and the city staff they operate in budgets you know they operate in spreading the dollars as best as they can and we have not put anything in front of them besides you know basically our advocacy that says you know putting money into this and keeping these kinds of things going like the band shell and the parks and the you know the things that that are used to generate this money we haven't been able to put a bona fide thing and saying that you know with all of these things that happen in the city of marquette it's x amount of millions of dollars yeah and it's you know, that kind of thing so i would say it's the mechanism not the tabulation i'm virtually certain that every organized arts group every uh group of volunteers that has you know anybody that has a certain uh level of sophistication in the process could get us numbers how yeah. many people how much on average they spend. So many groups do demographic research of their gatherings and things. It's having the mechanism to tabulate it all together to present it. Well, so one, of, one of the things, Jeremy, was, so we were working with Jen Goulet, who did it for the woman who did the um, alliances, kind of, here's the plan for the plan. I mean, that's how complicated all of this was. Yeah, we can do um, a very superficial like we did for the master plan. We basically called every arts and culture major stakeholder. They answered all the money questions. We put out a report. It was voluntary. But I think what we're looking at is wanting to do something um, that basically all of the, um, and I'm not a, uh, I don't know all the ins and outs of the business codes, but all the industry codes, it's really broad. We're talking about design, architecture, everything making sure it matches with the state of Michigan, which is what Jennifer was doing. We're doing a pizza. Yeah, the the creative pizza. Many that has that whole, uh, big pie. But she, uh, oh, uh, uh, cost her about $20,000. Can you hold on a second? I can't hear anything. Um, it would cost about, I think it was about $20,000 to, and, and that was more kind of UP focused, to having a consultant develop a uh, like a mechanism, like Walt said, that we all can go to our individual counties and compile this information. Um, I think that we could do it for less here in Marquette, but I really do think we need someone that's had experience doing it, not just making it a, maybe the economic department at Northern or Tech could assist, but I feel like it. let's do it let's do it right and let's not reinvent the wheel and get maybe a consultant in. I think not this year, maybe next year the city commission could help assist. Um, if we could find someone that could volunteer or we could raise money to, to help someone guide staff through this and work with a couple different partners like the smart zone or like um, economics department at Northern the masters in business program, uh, maybe, but definitely it was money that was holding us back because you know we're not economists and we did do it a superficial one like i said that said that we bring in about seven to ten million dollars a year in revenue and that's yeah. just from the the major the major ones okay and when and when you guys reference like mechanism you mean like just the the way that information is being organized and presented 
Yeah, and the codes, you know, how we're collecting it, um, how that information, I mean, I know there's a lot of, and maybe Michael knows this, um, uh, the, the information via uh, federal government that's out there that we can collect um, all of those things that I know not so much about. Yeah, the tool, the tool that would put it all together to have it be, uh, to make it bulletproof in effect, you know, we, we we yeah, can put the numbers. measuring, you know, we it's qualitative, quantitative, all of it. Yeah, we could put the numbers together. We could do a report, but, you know, someone would say, well, that wasn't really the blah, 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 and whatever. So it is most likely going to be a consultant process of having somebody come in. It's going to have to be more than this committee. It's going to have to be, I think, a lot of the stakeholders coming together and investing in it if they value it to put forth some money. Um, but, you know, no one's got any money right now. So, yeah, I was going to say, too, for something that's hard to quantify as arts and culture on an economic impact, I mean, yeah, I would recommend like a consultant or a contractor to kind of who specializes in getting a bulletproof report to kind of work on that. And then something that we maybe can update then, you know, annually, because one of the goals was to have kind of a report, annual report of arts and culture in Marquette so we can measure how it grows. Oh, um awesome. I'm going to email, which I don't think I have, that report that Jen Goulet made for the Alliance. It, it reads a little intellectual, like it reads like a thesis, but and she was supposed to make it so it was a little bit more, you know, uh, layman focused. But I want to send that to you. So especially, Jeremy, you'll understand, you know, why all of a sudden I think this is so complicated as I'm reading reports like this. Yeah, yeah. Is um, one, one last question. Uh, are there, do you guys know of agencies or consultants out there already that, that do provide this service? Or is that just kind of like you're thinking, okay, maybe we need to look in that direction? Do we have uh, any uh, contacts with some of the other cities like we were working with Artsopolis that maybe do quantify their own arts and culture? Maybe mm -hmm. consult with them and find out what kind of consultant or, or where to search for that kind of thing. Well, that's what Jen Goulet, we have to pay her at least twenty thousand dollars to do you know something but that's you know, a lot of time up here working with community surveys collating information working with the travel bureaus i just um, I, would, I, would, no, Tina, ahead, I would love to talk to you more about this because like um i mean maybe maybe i'm misunderstanding but like this is this is stuff that like i've i've worked on for other projects and like uh, or maybe this is just stuff that I care about and that it's not complicated to me because of that. But like, I've, I've worked on this kind of stuff for other projects and I, like, it, I understand it. It's, I, to me, I'm like, yeah, I'll, let's just do it. I can do that. Okay. So here's the other thing then. Um, the Alliance, they're meeting on Wednesday. One of the committees that's going to be breaking, they're going to find breakdown into committees, marketing, et cetera. One is the creative economy in this economic development for the UP. Of course, I'm interested from a Marquette perspective because I want to do Marquette, Marquette County. Yeah. So, but we can take volunteers. You know, that would be an interesting thing if you would volunteer for that committee for the Alliance. Maybe that's a way to um, work together then for Marquette, you know, to get, start with something smaller that can build we, if we build a, a template for our community that can build and other communities can use in the UP. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to talk more about it. So maybe I can get a broader idea of what you guys are dealing with. And because uh, I, I, on the surface level, I'm like, no, I can do that. But maybe I'm missing something, you know. I guess what it is, is there's just a gravity that uh, the gravitas that the city and, and, you know, the governments look for for these reports. If you can provide it, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, Tina, real quick, I did have a question about uh, with, uh, Jen Goulet. Uh, you mentioned when you were talking about her earlier that then COVID hit, right? Which kind of put stuff back, uh, you know, on the back burner. Is she still involved? Has she is she under a contract that will kick back in at some point, or would she have to be rehired? She'd have to be rehired. So right now, she um, the only thing she has left, and we haven't spoken for months, um, is for her to kind of uh, edit the, uh, which I'm going to send all of you, the, um, the report that she developed for us. And 
basically we want more do it yourself more what can we do to assist someone like her right to get this information um what we need her to kind of set it up for us so that's where we were she finishes the report then it's going to be like what jeremy said okay do we need to find someone to help coordinate all of this is that this office do we need someone with more economic um skills um and things like this and maybe there's a committee that pulls it together you know mm. but i'll send that report i think she really likes the idea of marquette i think she would come up here for a smaller study the up was pretty big yeah. um, and uh she's pretty on fire about uh doing something in marquette pretty smart woman nice i i, I, I oh go ahead Anyone? Okay. Um, well, then we will wrap that up. And uh, if you have any strategic plan questions, just reach out to Tina and, um, you know, we can get that information to you. If you want to get involved, please do reach out to Tina. It's a good way to do it. Moving on to good of, oh. I have one thought. I'm wondering what if for the next meeting, everyone brings five action items or goals of the, you know, kind of puts things in order of things that, they, or even maybe three things that they think on the strategic plan um, should be worked on. Sure. I think that's a good idea. Put that in your email to everybody, Tina, and remind us to all, let's just do three top priorities that we feel we'll put them together as a committee and then see how that shakes down into the next couple of years of implementing what's on the strategic plan. Uh, with that, we'll move to good of the order. So any members of the committee that have anything to share, feel free. Got something. Yeah. Um, it's still work in progress. There's no dates yet, but I, there's a person in town that has cancer and we're doing a benefit for him. So it's going to be online. A bunch of musicians are going to be playing, and then people can donate that way. Oh, and then I will also, um, I'm trying to round up some artists to uh, donate some items. So I'll auction that off. So one thing that I'm up to. Oh, good. Nice. Mm. Anyone else? All right. Um, one thing I can tell you is my band, Flatbroke Blues Band, has gotten the approval from the library to play on the steps outside, weather permitting, on that's Tuesday, September 1st. Usually nice. that's the kickoff to uh, Blues Fest week in Marquette, but there's no Blues Fest this year. You may find me down in uh, Matson Lower Harbor Park over Labor Day weekend sitting under a tree with a cup full of something of indeterminate or origin just weeping in the grass. So, but uh, there, there, there is no Blues Fest this weekend or this this year, of course, on Labor Day weekend. But uh, Flat Broke is playing on the steps of the library on the first of September. That's Tuesday, seven p.m. No, uh, fest, no fest, just the blues. Yeah, just the blues. No festival. It'd just be a festival of just weeping and moaning. Um, our next meeting, then, I guess, would be is it September tenth? I think that's right. The second, th the second Thursday of, of the yeah, month. Yeah, that's the tenth. Yeah, and five thirty, and unless something miraculous happens, we'll be doing it again um, on Zoom. So I'm, lo I'm looking forward to us getting together in person somehow, and maybe there's a way to convince the powers that be that we could do something in a more socially distanced way. But I don't know. I was going to ask about that too. Like, do we have like, you know, kind of a timeline as far as like, you know, a forecast of distancing? Cause I mean, if we're going to be looking at like the strategic plan and like what to prioritize, kind of having like a general idea that we agree on as far as how long out will be social distancing. Cause like a lot of what I see is 2021 doesn't look that great. Like overall, as far as events and like distancing, it doesn't look good. So I don't know if we have a timeline. I would just consider this the norm for a long time. That's how I've kind of been operating with my other organizations is that 2021, just assume that you're going to have to distance. Because even if a vaccine is made, it still won't be yeah. enough that will bring us out of the house. 
Yeah, I think every time we thought about loosening the meeting restrictions, um, it, it just seems like it's pushing it off, you know, a month, another month, another month. So I would plan on this and be, you know, delightfully surprised if it changes. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> My, I got one thing. Uh, we received at our building downtown, we received our certificate, our temporary certificate of occupancy. Um, and have our state licensing uh, approval next week. So we're almost finally finished with that project. Cool. Um. Okay. Well, I guess at that point, then we can adjourn this meeting. It sounds like uh, we've gotten everything pretty well covered. Look for emails from uh, from Tina on various things with the uh, the strategic plan, and we'll do it again on the 10th. And let's keep in touch. Otherwise, if there's things we need to get, you know, more information on, uh, Tina and Tristan and the staff will be happy to help. So we'll adjourn this meeting at 6.32 p.m. Thank you all. We'll see you next month. Thank you. Bye, everyone.